Teachers, what do you know about your students that they think you don't know? I have never understood how students think if they lower their volume by two notches we suddenly become deaf. It's an enclosed space with 15 to 30 other people. If I don't hear it once, it will probably get repeated and I'll hear it again. I think the issue is students think we have so much on our plate with a lesson that we're in a whole other world. But really, this could be the third or fourth time I've done this lesson this week, or even the 20th time in my career. When everything is basic rehearsal, you can zone out into other conversations pretty easily. I know who the loose girls are, the illegal substance dealers, the gang members, and when the fights are going to occur. I know each administrator has about five fake social media accounts and keeps tabs on what everyone is saying, and by Monday I will know what shenanigans you got up to over the weekend. I also know how to get out of going to the rally, which narc will look the other way and let you ditch class, and where people do the illegal substances on campus. I know that during lunch some have SX in the bathroom next door to my classroom, but they use protection. I've seen the used condoms on the floor, and by the end of the first month of school, I I know when you're lying and I know when you've had a crappy night at home. I know who has crappy parents and who has no parents. I know of one of my students who sometimes sleeps on the park bench and a few who are abused. I know several who take care of their siblings. I know of learning disorders and mental disorders. I know how much you have the capacity to handle and know that math is not the most important thing in the world. My 8th graders call me Miss B because for some reason they can never remember or pronounce my full name. One of my classes has started calling me Miss Booty when I hear them using it with each other. I pretend that I heard my name and ask if they need any assistance in the most chipper and obnoxious teacher voice possible. It's nice to see them jump when I respond. It's also nice to take a break from overhearing disgusting, prepubescent, school bathroom counter nasty business bus ride BJ horror stories by dropping in on the Pokemon conversations that spring up every now and then from the quiet kids that are probably even bigger weirdos. As the daughter of a teacher, you just learn things about students you never repeat, and you learn things about other teachers. My mom teaches special education, and she is bound to secrecy about everything, and she doesn't let up on it. But I hear other teachers talk about students like they're garbage. They talk about the parents. They even talk about each other. Teachers are the worst gossips. You want to hear some crap? Just stay after school. I teach at a public university. For something like eight years, I've been sitting in on the first day of class every semester, quietly dressed like a student. Every now and then one or two of them catch on, but most of them are clueless. They start talking about how they haven't done the homework for the first day, or how they've looked me up on Rate My Professor, or, or why I'm such a tool and late on the first day. I hear about being high or drunk or hung over that morning. I usually wait about ten minutes when they're thinking of leaving before I stand up and start class. Maybe it's because I'm English, but I've discovered how hard it is for me to say a word like start and then follow it up with class, start class, but rather I go start class because obviously they sound more similar. I only bring this up because I'm sure people have maybe noticed that sometimes I deviate between something like grass and grass, bath or bath and start and class. <laughs> God, I'm all tongue-tied now. Middle school teacher here, when you put your hand in front of your mouth to talk to whisper to a friend, I can tell and your voice isn't nearly as quiet as you think it is, so I can hear what you're saying too. When you're staring at your crotch and giggling every once in a while, I know you're texting, you're on social media, but sometimes I don't say anything because that's the only time you're not disrupting the rest of the class. When I do take your phone away until the end of the day, I hand it over to the dean who checks all your texts and social media accounts you're logged into. We bust your friends by checking who you're texting during school hours and email their teachers so they can just coincidentally notice their phone. When you're out for a family emergency for a week and come back with a tan and a tourist t-shirt, I know you're lying, especially when this is the third time in two years your grandmother has died. Seriously, please come up with something that doesn't insult my intelligence quite so much. You did understand your homework, you just didn't prioritize accomplishing it. The kids that didn't understand but tried used the 20 different tools I provided to assist you with it and bought it to me before or at the beginning beginning of class, not when I asked you to turn it in. Also, the dean and counselor fill me in on all your behavior and home issues. The nurse, who really is supposed to keep your medical issues private, is the biggest gossip in the school. Last of all, when you screw up and I have to call you on it, just acknowledge and or apologize. I don't want to reprimand you or correct you any more than you wanted, but it's part of my job. It's annoying to call your parents and fill out the paperwork when you screw up big. I won't turn it into a big deal unless you escalate it to a point that I have to do something about it. Well, based on the information that this person is giving, it sounds like this school has it on lockdown. I mean, it seems kind of invasive in some ways, but like they said, you're not supposed to have your phone out in class. I used to be in IT, but had a very messy divorce a couple of years back, and I now teach English in international schools in Japan. 
We all have school-issued computers with an integrated social network, and I can see all of the messages that the students send, even the private ones, to monitor online bullying, and I am not to let anyone know that I can see students' private messages. I got curious and started spying on them full-time. I learned about a couple of serious relationships between my class and one heterosexual and one homosexual, as well as learning that one of my students has a serious crush on me. Another came out of the closet, but everyone knew already and then ended up dating a classmate. One girl went completely MIA and all of us, including me, assumed she had deleted herself. I started getting strange emails about her death, but it turned out she had simply moved away and all of the kids knew I was spying on them. I live and teach high school kids in a small town and one of my students, just this total sweetheart, wonderful girl, is dating the scariest guy I have ever seen. Huge dude, lots of tattoos and piercings, way older than her, drives a souped up deathmobile around town, that kind of thing. Just all around a sketchy guy. It's big school gossip. Everybody knows and talks about it all the time. This student definitely enjoys the attention and always drops hints about what a bad boy he is. Late one night, on a school night, I pulled into a convenience store parking lot to pick up a few things and notice his car there. They walk out of the store together and get back in the car with ice cream. He picked her up from school and bought her ice cream, and they were just sitting in his car being adorable and sweet. When I got out of my car to go to the store, I could hear that they were listening to show tunes. Best part, we ended up driving out of the parking lot at the same time, and the guy spotted me and gave me the friendliest hi ever. Don't judge a book by the cover, I suppose, but it's kind of worrying when kids in high school are dating people who are significantly older and not even in education anymore. I mean, heck, I remember one guy who got absolutely roasted when he was in year 11 because he was dating a year 7. So that's like, you know, an 11 to 12 year old dating a 16 year old, which is definitely sketchy. Middle school teacher in a pretty rough school here. I know about their parents, illegal substances, unemployment or legal problems from data our school is given, and from the parents outright telling me during phone calls or meetings. It's crazy and kind of trustworthy what the parents offer up to me. I've had them tell me, and the school counselor too, that so-and-so cousin was murdered in front of them last week, that's why they've been gone, or there's a lot of kids being bad touched. One kid I recall finally had enough and pulled a gun on his dad. After being molested, for probably years. It's hard to get them to work diligently after that. I also can't tell certain kids that their moms, who probably are just a few years older than me, made a pass at me before they knew I wasn't single. I'm a swim instructor and I know if my students play the piano. How? Well, they swim their front crawl with piano hands until I correct them. What are piano hands? Piano hands are when the index, middle, and ring fingers are together, but the thumb and pinky are extended outward. A good habit for someone who might need to hit a high or low note. I also have a psych degree, and my understanding for why this happens is due to interference from similar neural substrates in the cerebellum. I also have had a student with flute hands, and my boss has hockey hands. You should see the look on my student's face when I tell them I know they play the piano. They think I'm psychic. I used to work as a substitute. I learned more than I ever wanted to about the kids I taught. More often than not, I wanted to switch from whatever lecture I was on to one about the concept of plausible deniability. You want to talk to your buddy about how much devil's lettuce you smoked and how many loose women you got with? Great, do it somewhere else. I'm required to inform security and the office about that stuff. Yes, I will still do it even if your cousin is a gangster and will pop a cap in me. Kids in juvenile detention schools just have no sense of plausible deniability. We'll call him Ted. We had a food drive last semester before Thanksgiving for about two months. We made a huge basket of canned food. Things to make pies, stuffing, sides, bought a turkey, and as a staff, voted for what students' family needed it the most. We all agreed that Ted's family, without question, needed it the most. A teacher had to pay for his uniform early on in the year. So he was told close to Thanksgiving by administration that someone would be delivering a basket to his house that afternoon. I guess he was overwhelmed and didn't ask questions then, because he came to my class and asked me, is that the food we've been raising for poor people? I didn't know what to say. I said, some of it. 
So was it a random thing that I'm getting the basket? I knew what he was asking, so I said, Oh my goodness, you won? He acted surprised. I said, Man, I'm jealous. They put a basket together with the food left over they didn't donate and picked one person from our program in a drawing and you must have won it. He was totally pumped. Before my class was over, I went to his next four classes and told the teachers to play along with the raffle story. They did. He doesn't know. Still a little annoyed that the admin told him. I feel like it could have been a left at the front door sort of thing. I love food drives and little stories like this. It really does warm my heart. The amount of crap I overhear is ridiculous. I know which of my students hosts all the parties and who made out and or hooked up with whom at said parties. I know who does the illegal substances. I know who does the illegal substances and doesn't think that the teachers know they do the illegal substances. I know that one of my students gives crappy BJs to a student in another one of my classes. I know who cheats on everything. Sometimes it's the goody two-shoes kid. I know that at least three students have agreed that they would totally tap that, meaning me. They think I'm oblivious. I have excellent hearing. Being a teacher, it would be really uncomfortable if students were just talking about what they'd want to do with you like that a lot. That would be really like, oof. I was a TA to the same teacher for four years in high school. I was really uptight at the time and asked her why she didn't mind when the same dude left class every single day with the pass for at least 20 minutes. My teacher said it was because he was making out with his girlfriend in the stairwell closet and so help her God if I interrupted them because she was the best he was ever going to get. Teachers know your stuff, man. That teacher's a real one. Such a good wingman. I'm not currently teaching, but when I was a student teacher, what I was surprised to find out right away, and all you who are still in high school should know this, is how easy it is to tell when you're being lied to. I mean, teenagers are terrible at lying. I absolutely knew when I was being lied to. But here's the thing, kids. If they don't call you out on your lie, it's not because you succeeded in being convincing. It's because you're probably the 50th person that day to do so, and it's seriously just not worth the effort over something small. This one girl would ask to go to the bathroom almost every day to see her boyfriend who had a different lunch than she did. She'd usually be gone only 5 or 10 minutes, so I frequently let her do so. I used to do exactly the same thing in school, so I know how it is. She did her work, so she earned my discretion on that case. Pro tip, if you give, you get. Put in the effort and you will have bargaining chips. Also, I just want you guys who are still in school to know this. Your teachers know how to keep a professional distance, but they are not robots and they are not blind. They see what's going on with you and they care. I cried at least once a week over my students. I only taught for a short time and now, two years later, I remember all my students' names, would recognize them on sight and remember who made me cry. Oh no, not that tactic. I always hate it when people don't like yell at you for doing something wrong but they're just like i'm disappointed and it's like ah no don't do this to me that they're in gangs and which gangs they're in really you ask to borrow a pen but you don't want to write with the one i give you because it's blue you can't sit in a blue chair but you're not in a gang nah it's actually really sad. I've only been teaching for five and a half years and two of my former students have already been killed in gang-related violence. Middle school ESL teacher here. For the first month, I didn't tell my students I spoke Spanish. I'm white. In that month, I heard more about my butt than I ever wanted to know. Also some gossip, love lives, hate for school, the usual. How did my students not know that I speak Spanish if I'm an ESL teacher? The majority of ESL teachers, i.e. American teachers in China, Japan, or other Asian countries do not know the native language language. The accepted practice for ESL instruction is called English Immersion. It basically means that all class time will be in the desired second language, in this case, English. ESL teachers use instructional methods such as TPR, fancy way of saying hand motions and body language, and other such methods to help level 1 students learn the basics. You'd be surprised how much you can learn by just pointing to things and saying the English word for it. How did I finally tell them? I did a class at the end of the month on the differences between English and Spanish in Spanish. I just acted like nothing was different, asking questions in Spanish and instructing in Spanish. A more glorious feeling would be hard to find. How did they react? Jaws dropped, chaos saw ensued, several students asked me if I spoke Spanish. I said in Spanish something like, how could I speak Spanish? I'm a gringa. Two students apologized after class for saying inappropriate things in class and one particular vocal student ran out of the room and allegedly tossed his cookies in the bathroom. Hilarity ensued, needless to say, I now have a great relationship with with my students and they know not to mess around when I'm in the room. I'm a high school teacher and have a class Twitter that my students can follow for homework updates.
websites, links to presentations, quizzes, etc. I told my students, don't ask me to follow you on Twitter because I won't. Not only do I not have the time to read your tweets, there are some things I just do not want to know. Your personal lives are one of them. I lied. After about 40 students followed, I went and snooped on every single one of their profiles and read all of their tweets. So much regret. So much. So what you're saying is you're a liar. One thing I know for sure is when my students are high. I've smoked quite a bit back in the day and therefore know all the symptoms and lingo. I totally mess around with them when they are stoned, not only because it is hilarious, but also in hopes to discourage them from smoking before coming to school. If I know it becomes a problem with any of them, then I will have the serious discussion about how you may not remember what you and your buddies talked about all those times when you were high, but you will sure as hell remember whether or not you passed my class. But for the most part, the stoners don't come to class too often and wait until after school. Teachers have huge amounts of access to students' information. We gossip. More than students do. We know everything. Who hooked up with who on camp, the weekend, and the holidays. We know about makeups, breakups, and everything in between. We know who smokes. We know who is doing the illegal substances and who is getting up to mischief. We know kids' asexual and gender orientation, sometimes before they do. It's mostly just from listening in class. Kids seem to think that teachers can't hear personal conversations or that we don't pay any mind to them. We do. Working in a high school is like living on the set of a soap opera. I still can't believe how devastated I was when my favorite couple of 2012 broke up. It was torturous. You know what? I get it. I get it. You've probably not got much going on. You're just doing your work. And it's like, you know, all the little bits of drama and whatever you hear is just a little bit of entertainment in the day to get you through work and keep you occupied, I guess. My boyfriend is an elementary school teacher and he says that he knows way more about students' personal lives than they think. Like, their parents tell them their problems with poverty, immigration and stuff. Meanwhile, some of the kids are like, I went to Cabo for summer break or parents' private jet and he's just like, awesome, why don't you write a journal entry about it? As a student, I was close with the student teacher at the time. I liked a boy and he told me not to go for him because he had gotten in trouble before with child smut and illegal substances. No idea how he knew that. That does sound like the kind of thing that people would need to be notified about. I mean, I know someone who actually worked in care and they had to, um, well, they were offered the job to escort someone who had at one point molested a child and because they were special needs, they needed someone to go with them to college. And this person in question who I know, after being informed about what the dirty diddler did, they outright refused to do the job. I'm pretty sure sure something as severe as anything to do with children, a crime like that is going to be told to anyone that has to deal with them on a regular basis in a professional manner. When I teach undergrads, it's painfully obvious which ones are dating each other, even if it's a secret. I recently taught a required course for freshmen, and one of my students would give me outlandish excuses for not having been in class. He had a breakup, two dead relatives, and was flown across the world to save his family business, all in one semester. Oddly enough, his work was pretty good. I had to sit him down and explain that I really didn't care where he had been as long as he was showing up to reviews with completed projects, and that a long-winded explanation was unnecessary. The look on this teenager's face when I told him, I'm going to be out today, was perfectly reasonable, priceless. As for when I'm teaching graduate students, I definitely do know hardly any of you little buggers have read the material beyond a thesis statement, unless you're PhD students sitting in on a master's level seminar, and in that case, I do know that you love the sound of your own voice more than Frank Reynolds love rum ham. So shut up, you're ruining the class for the people who actually need it. In a city middle school teacher here, I know everything my students gossip about during class. No, not because I have supersonic teacher ears, as many of my students suspect. No, not because that smoke detector in the corner is actually a camera, as I convinced them of earlier this year. It's because kids can't whisper worth a damn. Also, privacy settings. Seriously, kids, use them. Not to mention, those kids I had in class two years ago who come by my classroom to visit and make small talk every day after school. Yeah, they keep me more in the loop than most of the students. Sometimes it pays to be the cool teacher. Ah, but how sad it is when the cool teacher eventually grows up or gets promoted and then becomes a regular teacher. I understand your jokes. I just pretend that I don't. When I was a student, I would marvel at how my teachers could fail to understand the brilliant asexual innuendo I would use that would have my classmates snickering while they, the instructor, looked on without comprehending. Now I hear 18-year-old girls in my class make the same kinds of comments, and as a 36-year-old dude, my brain immediately begins flashing warning lights and sirens. So I play really dumb because I'm just not going to go there. And that is probably, honestly, for the best. 
Hi, school teacher here. Regarding students' personal lives, it's very much a need to know basis. I don't really give a damn that you party on the weekends, get high after school with your buddies, or anything like that. The thing is that as teachers, we are mandated reporters for a lot of things. The less you know about stuff like that, the better. No teacher snoops Facebook for this very reason. If I see a student ripping a bong on their profile picture, I have to do something about it. That and perusing Facebooks of 14 to 18 year olds is creepy as hell. What I do know is the stuff I think is necessary. Which students come from disadvantaged backgrounds? Who comes from a two-parent home? Behavior and academic histories? The last thing you want to do is call home. A woman answers the phone and you assume it's a kid's mom when it's their sister who doubles as their primary caretaker. You don't want to tell kids that they should go on the school field trip and they come from a very low-income home. A lot of kids probably assume teachers don't know stuff like this, but most of us go out of our way to make sure they do. I also also know which teacher's classes you're a butthole in. You don't really want to say anything about that to the kid either, because frankly, some teachers are buttholes and they have it coming. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories. And if you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot. Linked in the description below.